With JSON, you can not only execute single line statements, you can also run multi-line statements. Things work similarly for the most part, but there are some differences that I wanna cover in this video. First of all, I wanna clarify that you can run multiple lines of Java code in the same line separated by semicolons. JShell allows that. So for instance, int i equals 10, semicolon, int j equals 20, semicolon, int k equals i plus j. This works fine. You don't have to have multiple lines. So except for the last piece where the semicolon is optional, uh, these other statements can be separated by semicolons and you can actually execute multiple lines of Java code in the same line. But this is not what we're talking about here. If we were to do this, if we were to write the entire program like this, this is gonna be tedious. This line is gonna go on forever, depending on what code you're writing. And it's hard to kind of reason through what's going on over here. So this is not what I'm talking about. Let me exit and um, get back to the shell. So I'm gonna start a new J shell session. And uh, let's say I have an integer i equals 10. Now I can have a bunch of statements because of the way some of the uh, Java constructs works. Like for example, the if statement, you cannot really have, but well, you can technically have an if statement in a single line, but it doesn't look too good. So we can break this down into multiple lines. So let's say I have an int j equals zero. And uh, I'm gonna have an if condition which says, if i is greater than five, assign the value of j to 10 as well. Okay, so I'm gonna say if i is greater than five. I'm gonna open the curly braces. I can of course type the whole if condition in one line, but notice what happens if I open the curly brace and hit enter. JShell detects that this is not the end of the statement and it expects you to write the continuation. So you can actually write further statements. You notice this prompt has changed to a continuation prompt and here you can fill in the rest of the statement in the if block. So I can say j equals 10 if i is greater than five. I'm gonna hit enter. JShell still knows that it hasn't completed execution because the curly brace hasn't closed for the if. Now I close the curly brace, hit enter. Now this completes accepting that input statement and then it executes it. Now if I were to type the value of j, j now has a value of 10 because this if block executed and it detected that i was greater than five. So it assigned the value of 10 to j. Except for this continuation prompt, this works for the most part, but here's where things get a little bit tricky. If you were to press an up arrow, you get the statement that you last ran. We've covered this before, but notice what happens if I press another up arrow. You get the close curly brace. When there are multi-line statements, the up arrow does not land on that block of statements. It actually goes statement by statement. So this can be a little bit tricky when you wanna re-execute that block of code. You cannot do an up arrow and hit enter like you would with single line statements. This is where slash list comes in handy. So let's say I uh, type slash list, I get the block as a number. So I can do slash three and it re-executes it. Let's test that out. I'm gonna make j as zero again. And I'm gonna type slash three so that that block of code gets re-executed. And now j should ideally have the value of 10, which it does. So you can use slash list to look up and re-execute. You cannot really use the up arrow. Another thing which is different with block statements like this is that the semicolon is mandatory inside block statements. So let's say I re-execute this. If i is greater than five, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but here I'm gonna skip the semicolon. J equals 10, I'm gonna skip the semicolon and close the curly brace and notice what happens. J shell complains that the semicolon is expected. So the semicolon is not expected when you're running single line statements. We've already seen you can completely skip that. But when you're inside a code block, you are expected to have the semicolon. Now, code blocks can be useful when you're doing an if block, when you're doing a loop, like a for loop or a while loop. But you can also use the concept of a block of code to run a bunch of statements that you want to do together. All right. So let's say I have, um, I want to assign i to the value of 100 and j to the value of 200. And I want to do it in one shot. I don't have to have an if block over here. I can just open the curly brace to start this continuation prompt. And I can execute a bunch of statements like this. So I can say i equals 100. Now that this is inside a block, I have to have the semicolon. I can say j equals 200. Have the semicolon. I can execute as many statements as I want here. I can type as many as I want here. Uh, they haven't executed yet till I close the curly brace and hit enter. When I do this, 
i and j take in take those values because those statements would be executed then so i have type i i is 100 and j but it is executed in the context of a block so you have this option of opening a block of code typing in all the statements and they wouldn't be executed until you close that curly brace and hit enter so there's slight deviations from the way you run single line statements but it's important to remember when you're running the block of code like this